Welcome to the webinar on Students Against Destructive Decisions, SAD's Rock the Belt program. Here's a photo of some students who took the pledge to always wear their seatbelts. They signed the Rock the Belt banner. Rock the Belt has three main components. One, the pre-observation survey. Two, several activities and three, post-observation survey. Let's start with the pre-observation survey. This can take place before or after school. You use the seatbelt survey data collection form for tracking purposes, and I'll show you what that looks like in a few seconds. And we like to provide treats or candies to the students as they come into the school. Here's the seatbelt survey observation form. In the right-hand corner, you'll see that you need to put the school name, and we like to have two observers, primary and secondary, the date of the event, the time you start and the time you end. And what we do is we stand on the curb and when the cars drive in, you can see whether the driver, uh, the driver's passenger and maybe two passengers in the back, whether they have their seat belts on or not. And when they do, you circle Y for yes, U for unknown, and no if you don't see a seat belt that they have their seatbelt on. We like to use a clipboard to make it easy to track these. Here's an example of a completed seatbelt survey observation form. And you can see where we've circled Y's and how many we've done. Activities, there are several activities in the Rock the Belt program. One is the quick click challenge and I'll explain that in detail in a few seconds the living seat belt, chalk the walk, I'll show you an example of that, the seat belt fashion show, which students use duct tape to make fashionable seat belts. That's really fun. And the seat belt pledge. The quick click challenge. Here are the official rules. Each team must have four members. Teams start from a designated starting line, usually about five to 10 feet in front of the car. We have car and all the doors are open to the car and they remain open throughout the entire activity. We need two people, staff people, to help with this event. One has a whistle and stands near the car and observes that the team members are running around the car in the right direction and that they put their arms up when they have their seat belts fashioned. The other is at the curb and they are taking the times. They are the timekeeper. So the students will um, run to each seat into the car. We advise them to strategize on which seat they actually wanna to go to first so they're all not going towards the same seat in the car. Once they are in the car, they buckle their seat belts and all the team members are to raise both hands in the air after their seat belt is fastened. They are fastened. When all four seat belts are buckled and all eight hands are up in the air, the crew member will blow the whistle, which signals to the students to unbuckle and rotate clockwise to the car, to the next seat in the car. Members must exit the vehicle after each position. Sliding across the seats or across the hood of the car is not permitted and re will result in disqualification. So they continue to rotate around the car clockwise until they've been in every position, all four. The clock is stopped once all four team members buckle their seat belts in the fourth rotation and raise their hands. Here is the quick click challenge score sheet. And we like to just write one person's name from each team and log them down on this sheet. And the timekeeper will put the actual time after the four team members are all done with their quick click challenge. An example of the car with all four doors open and next to it are the students running around the car. Here's an example of students at the starting line taking off to take their seats in the car. And here is an example of the winners. We give them a Rock the Belt t-shirt. 
Here are examples of some other lucky champions proud to wear their t-shirts. Here's an example of Chalk the Walk. The students use chalk to put safety messages about wearing their seat belts, and they do this all around the school. Number three, post-observation survey is similar to the pre-observation survey. You can do this before or after school. You use another seat belt survey data collection form for tracking purposes and do it the same exact way. And we always provide treats and candy for the students. So this is the seat belt survey summary form from the pre and post survey forms that you completed. So you document on this form the number of belted or not belted for both the pre-observation survey and the post-observation survey. And hopefully the post-observation survey is better. Here's some more pictures of rock the belt activities. And I wanted to thank you for participating in the rock the belt webinar.